All right, so we cool here is with the guys from Almost Gone. How's everyone doing? Good, man. Oh, good, doing good. Great. I just listened to your new track, Burn, man. That song is fucking amazing, guys. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank we you. Kind of... It gave me some uh, Warp Tour throwback feels, man, from when I was <laughs> Good. That's what we're going for. We yeah, want... that's exactly it. We want Warp Tour throwback feels we want you know green day the era feels blink 182 anima of the state we want all that no i mean i i totally dig it I, I dig the vibe that was going on there like i said you know i remember being a kid going to warp tour not knowing half the bands that were on there and that was the whole fun of the part I was walking around from stage to stage and hearing all that shit and there was i could just totally imagine when i was listening to the song that kind of vibe again like seeing you know hearing that pop up and catching my attention to me running over to that stage hell yeah I'm, i always i always uh i remember one year i had a bunch of friends that went to warp tour and i i didn't get to go for some reason and they came back and they were telling me about like all these like awesome new bands they had seen like that's that's how you know that like bands killed it when you're the band that the kids go back and tell all their friends about oh for sure you know i mean those were the days man i remember uh I remember I, I met Fred Durst when he was opening up for Corn. He, he played in my area, I'd say about a month before he came on Warp Tour. And I remember meeting him. Gave me, I still got the cassette that he gave me. And then I was waiting. I was the only person waiting to see Limp Bizkit start during that shit. And Fred came out beforehand. He was like, you remembered my name and everything. I was like, fucking 14 years old, man. It was awesome. That's awesome. Wow. So, Miss Warp Tour, I hope it comes back soon. I could definitely see it happening. You know, I mean, that's what everything going on right now. I think that's what we need, honestly, is like a big festival type deal to go on and get everyone going, you know? Yeah, Warp Tour kind of hits that vein. It like, it's it's like, it's a kind of people where like, cr like crossover between genres, it like can really go over well. Like if they did Warp Tour today, I could see there had being like Limp Bizkit, Corn like those 90s, like Juggernauts, as well as, of course, Machine Gun Kelly, but also like Trippy Red, like the, the rappers that are walking the fine line between rap and, and punk rock. I think I think it would be a huge success. I remember in 99, I went unplayed. I was so pissed off that I, I had to miss it because I, I went to Woodstock. And it was just like, oh, man, of all the dates, you know what I mean? You were at Woodstock 99? Fuck yeah, man. Was it scary? Nah. It was, uh, it was, it was all right. You know, I, I mean, I remember when the riot started and shit, I was with, fuck man, I think I was 15, maybe 16 at the time. And uh, it was nuts. I mean, I, I remember what started the riots. It was, everything was going on. Like the f prices were outrageous for everything. And then they like stopped taking the garbage. So there's piles of shit all over the place. And they weren't doing the porta potties and they shut the water off and everyone was just getting pissed. And I remember they were handing out these candles because they wanted to take a picture from space of everyone lighting their candle up to see what it looked like. And they kept telling everyone there's going to be this huge band to close out Woodstock and it's going to be such a big deal. And for days we were sitting there guessing, oh man, it's going to be ACDC, it's going to be Rolling Stones, it's going to be a, a super group. It was fucking nobody, man. It was a Jimi Hendrix hologram was the big thing. I remember everyone their candles lit and they just started throwing them in the piles of garbage and everyone just started fucking going crazy. I remember seeing uh -huh. the car through it and they were rocking it and they flipped the car over and they started throwing candles at it and everyone's screaming, they were, it's going to blow up. And then just fights and shit all over the place. I remember just going back to my tent and staying there for the night when everything was burning on around me because they wouldn't let you out. We all got locked in. Was it really like... Um, during like break stuff by Limp Biscuit, that it really got bad, or was it already bad before that? Nah, man, Limp Biscuit, I, I wasn't even the last band to play. I mean, when he played break stuff, it was cool because they had like uh, they had all this art because it was at an old like Air Force base, and they had the, these walls set up, and there was had all this art on plywood, and everyone started ripping the plywood and shit off. And I remember people were crowd surfing on these big pieces of plywood. I mean, don't get me wrong. The set was awesome and people got excited and pumped up and shit, but nah, that was Limp Bizkit and Cosmo fucking riot, man. Overpricing, garbage, not being able to take a shit, <laughs> no water. 
that that sucks because they catch so much heat for that. I mean, I, I mean, I would take the credit if I was them for sure. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Be like, the fuck for sure. For sure. That's dope. So let's get back to you guys, man. I mean, I, I love this track. Uh, what made you? You guys got together in 2019, and this is going to be the first material you guys are, are putting out. Is that right? Now we've got three singles out right now. Um, and so the stuff we have out right now, we wrote that in 19, recorded it in 2020. And so it's kind of like, I was trying to think of an analogy for how I look at it. It's like at the time, it was something we were so proud of the material we have out there, but now we have burn. We have these other songs that are following up burn. that are in the same vein. It's like, that's the new thing that we're proud of and excited about. You know what I'm saying? So well, while we, you know, we got some songs out there, but like this, like burn and the, the warp tour vibe songs that we're putting out next, that's like the new big thing in our mind, the stuff that we're really stoked about. Yeah. I feel like we found like a cohesive sound that like, all the stuff we've been writing all kind of just sounds cohesive. Whereas our old stuff, like not to say we don't like it and that we aren't like so proud of it, but after two years of playing together, we kind of hit our stride and what we're trying to accomplish, I guess, in terms of sound. Yeah, dude, this band has been such an education in like in bands and you know how they how they form and, and more importantly how the chemistry builds. Like when we started, we were doing anything and everything we were doing covers of you name the the vein of rock music we were doing covers of it because we were just experimenting with everything writing songs that have obvious like blues influence and some funk in them and just kind of all over the place and uh like yeah like zach was saying this is this just fits it just feels good i don't even know how how else to put it other than that now, let's say the pandemic never happened and you guys were just able to keep on going through. Do you think you would have achieved the sound that you wanted to? Uh, that's a great question. I think we would have, honestly. At the same time, I feel like we wrote all these songs during, like, downtime when we weren't playing gigs or, like, worrying about, like, practicing cover songs for, like, the bigger, like, just kind of some of the other gigs that we do because some of the gigs we play, like, covers. We weren't gigging at all. I feel like a lot of these songs we wrote just like jamming around at practice or I know some of them like Nick and I lived together last year and some of those some of those things we kind of wrote just hanging out at our house like in the middle of the winter time we weren't doing shit. So yeah all, the, yeah all the new songs we've written were written during the pandemic. Now that you think about it. You know these fucking dudes are crazy. Usually I'm I'm more on a flow like or I could just go right after but you know you see people's heads moving and shit, so I'm waiting for someone else to say anything. <laughs> Sorry, my connection has been shitty as hell. I've been trying. Um, yeah, you're blurry as I'll get out. So with that being said, I know you're releasing the, the new single that comes out on the 16th, which is this Friday. Are you guys got anything planned for the release? Are you guys uh, got any shows booked or anything like that? Yeah, we got a show. We have a show on the 16th. Awesome. So so there's this place in Richmond, and it's called uh, it's called the Hof Garden, and they market themselves as a beer garden, even though I don't really think that's what it is at all. Um, it's a three story bar is what it is. So like the, the bottom level is like a dive bar and the middle level is like a rock club. And that's where we're going to be playing. And the top is a rooftop. And at the top they have like DJs and dance stuff. So, um, cool, really cool place, really hot, um, hangout spot here in, in the city. Um, so it should be awesome. It should be a lot of energy at the show. Um, it'll be exciting to get to debut our, our new stuff and debut burn and, all kinds of good stuff. So do you guys have a, a plan of attack from here on out? Is it going to be like every six weeks? Are you guys going to re release another single? You hit the nail on the head, my friend. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got we've got the, the follow-up to Burn recorded. We have a studio date in August to record the follow-up follow to Burn. 
Um, and actually before practice today, I was talking with our producer about trying to figure out when we can get the next studio date. So that's the idea is little doses of content. Uh, Cause I see, I see so many, so many bands, especially in the rock music genre. I think, I think rock fans are a little particular. Um, they're still putting out albums, which I, I love albums. I have, I have vinyl collection. I love albums, but at the same time, a lot of these bands make fans wait two years for the next concert. And, uh, you know, in this day and age where we have the attention spans of Nats, I'm a big believer in, in like, here's a, here's a new song. And then, you know, promote that and, and see how people like it. And then, you know, move on to the next one. Boom. Six, eight weeks later, here's the next song. You see, I mean, I, I've said this before in other interviews, but I really enjoy this new format. I mean, I understand it was adaptation during the pandemic to only put out singles because if you put out a full album, then it would have got lost. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you don't get a chance to tour to back it up, give them a little sprinkle of music. But in my mind, when you're only doing a single and you have nothing to fall back on, that means you're putting out your best work possible. I mean, there's no chance of you just releasing a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the David Lee Roth approach where he put out, you know, what what did he say? Like trims off the flab. That's how he used to market his old material. Like here's here's one hot song, or one hot EP with three or four songs. I, I totally dig it. You know, it gives everyone a chance to go ahead and, and vibe off that song for for that period of time. And once they start burning out, you go ahead and hit them off with something new. Hell yeah, exactly. Now, are you guys doing anything to uh, attach to the song? I know a lot of bands are doing like exclusive merchandise to push for that single. Are you guys doing anything like that? There's a music video component to this one as well. Um, that's pretty cool. And then we are ordering some merch. Yeah, I seen the video, man. It was pretty cool. Yeah, we've also got, like he said, got some merch. We've got burn shirts that are being designed right now actually tomorrow the, the designer told me he uh is supposed to be able to show us how the is going so far um i don't know what the design looks like really but he told he asked me do you guys have any problems with subliminal hints at marijuana to which i said absolutely not i prefer oh, I boss. <laughs> <laughs> no chance So is weed legal in uh, Virginia yet or no? Yeah, As of July 1st. Yeah. How does that work out for you guys? Are you able to just to get it anywhere? There's no dispensaries yet, but I think I've heard of like some pop-up ones. But so in Richmond, Philip Morris is based here, and I know they've had the patents on it for a long time. Because Philip Morris and Altria are based in Richmond, and that's like the largest – like factory producing cigarettes in the country i'm pretty sure so they're going to start rolling out their own thing commercialized pre-rolled I, I have no idea about that Apparently. So coming somewhere down the line it's crazy man i mean i'm in new york they legalized it for us uh i don't know a month or two ago but they didn't say shit you know what i mean there's like there's no dispensaries there's no uh letting you know when it's going to happen I guess you're allowed to carry uh, three ounces of grass, have five pounds, but you can't buy it or fucking get it anywhere. So I don't know. It's, it's legal. It's very here. similar here in Virginia. They haven't told us anything, but it's just like you won't go to jail anymore, which is nice, I guess. That's kind of their stance on it. <laughs> That's the ultimate word. Now, I see that a lot of bands – once it gets legal in their state, they start their own strain or they just have their own pre-rolls or things like that. Do you guys plan on doing anything crazy like that? I have no idea. Well, I hadn't <laughs> even thought That's a brilliant idea, though. <laughs> we might have to get on that. <laughs> well, I mean, no, man. You We're not it. careful enough as a reggae band, you know? <laughs> so, I know you guys got a show coming up on Friday from there on out. What, what's next for you guys you guys got a, a summer tour plan or anything like that we have like seven or eight shows booked out for the rest of the year as of right now and um kind of planning to start hitting the venues like for 2022 dates hopefully pretty soon because uh 
there's a lot of bands in the area that gig the same place as we do. So we kind of got to get those emails out or go to these venues and grab a beer and talk to these general managers and whatnot and then try and get our names in the calendar for 2022. Yeah, we got, um, so we've got a couple, we've got a couple shows just like us or us with other, you know, bands of the same size as us this year. And then we also, we have a couple cool ones coming up. Um, one we're opening for a group called white trash. Um, I don't know if, if, if you remember their video for, uh, their hit song was called apple pie. Uh, Ramsey in the early 90s they were on Geffen Records um, they, they're they reuniting and they're coming through town and the promoter hit us up and uh, actually he hit up a friend of ours named Ed Savoy and he said let me let me uh, turn you on to my boys so he he asked us if we wanted to do the show and we're like hell yeah we'd love to and then we also got a an offer to open for another um, national act I wish I could say who it is, but I'm not allowed to yet. Um, the promoter needs to do a few things before we're allowed to post it on our social media or tell anybody, but it, it's a pretty exciting opportunity for us. That's awesome, man. Good for you guys. That's real cool. Yeah, this this industry is, uh, you know, it, it seems like if you're just genuinely curious, you have good intentions, you want to meet people, and you want to learn and you want to grow. It, it seems like there's two kinds of people. There's either some people who are like, uh, forget you, new dude. You know, I got better things to do with my time than talk to you. And then there's the other side. It seems like there's a lot of people who, when they see that, like, effort and genuine curiosity and, and desire to learn and get better. I think it's like, especially with somebody who's a former musician, I think they see a bit of themselves in that. And so we've gotten, we've gotten, uh, really fortunate through people like that um just kind of you know trying to trying to work hard and and trying to get to know people and just um being ourselves being genuine so that's that's really how this opportunity with um with white trash and and the one with the other group um came about is just networking getting to know people asking questions being curious being friendly and uh you know as they say, a rising tide lifts all boats. So um, if something positive is happening to us in our city um, and we you know, take those opportunities and we play really well, it's not only gonna benefit us, but it's gonna benefit the other bands in the area because then people will go, oh, that, you know, that almost gone band played well. They sound a lot like such, you know, so-and-so, Railgun or the, some other band from, from Richmond. And uh, the, the word just spreads. Now, how do you balance out this band and seasons? I don't sleep much, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it scratches two different itches for me. Uh, seasons, I play just guitar, and here I play guitar and, and sing. And I love doing the singing part. Um, they're, you know, I, I have a hard time saying which one I enjoy more. But um, I also I love the heavy music, but I also love getting to do stuff like this. It's a little bit more melodic. Um, it's kind of like I've heard Corey Taylor say in an interview, you know, Slipknot, he gets out like a, a level of aggression, whereas with Stone Sour, he gets to express himself more melodically. And uh, that's kind of how I feel about it. I don't, I don't know what I would do without one or the other. So people that are watching, if they want to follow up, they want to hear the music, they want to check out the tour dates, where do they go? Where do they go for everything? Yeah, so we're on all... Um, we're on all major streaming platforms, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon, Apple Music, iTunes, all that stuff. Um, and then Facebook, we're, you can find us at um, Almost Gone RVA. So it's, it's literally the letters R, V, and A at the end. So Facebook, Almost Gone RVA, Instagram, Almost Gone RVA, and our YouTube channel is the same thing, Almost Gone RVA. Awesome. Well, I really enjoyed talking to you guys. That new track, Burn, is amazing. I really can't wait to see what's next coming from you guys. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right, guys. Take care of yourselves.